Hi kids, Heidi here. I have a haul for you today from a Goodwill store that I had never visited before. And now I think I wanna go back. It's a, in a town that is about 40 miles away from me. And I was in the area for another reason and saw the Goodwill and had some time. So I thought I would look around and see what they have. It's kind of a tourist town, but not hugely. So I thought it would be interesting. And boy, I had such a great time. I got 22, 22 items and I spent $95 before tax. So that is what, four something? It seemed like most of the pieces were $4.99, which is, that's pretty good. And um, it wasn't even a sale day. I really feel like I only looked at about half the stuff, so I kind of want to go back next Tuesday when it's senior day and I get 20% off. Uh, this is a mixture of men's and women's, but some of the men's pieces are great, so you're going to want to learn those brands in case you ever, as I say, take a whiz through the men's department. So let's get started. First is a perennial favorite, a bagalini. Oh, it's too shiny. There we go. They're nylon bags, very popular with travelers or people who just like lightweight bags. It's crossbody. It's got a fun orange interior. And I'll probably get um, 15 or 20 for that. And I paid, what did I pay for this? The purse. $3 for the purse. I always like to poke through the patterns just in case there's any great costume or cosplay or... Um, reenactment kind of costumes like medieval and Civil War and all that stuff. But also popular are Vogue patterns because Vogue patterns are usually like $20 a piece or more. But these two great ones are from the, <laughs> the 90s. And they're just classic and such great um, kind of minimalist capsule wardrobe pieces. Uh, anyway, I paid 40 cents each for them. And I'll probably get uh, 12 to $15 for each one. Have you ever picked up patterns? They're very easy to store and ship. Oh, I want to show you something. So there's two kinds of patterns you could sell. Cut and uncut. This is uncut. You can see it's all still folded really nicely. Um, cut patterns, they're usually very cheap, so you can take a chance on them. But before you sell a cut pattern, you want to take it out of the package and make sure that all the pieces are there. And the instructions tell you what pieces there should be, like A through Q or whatever. They're all lettered. But you can sell cut patterns. You just need to verify. I'm having the hardest time. You just need to verify that all the pieces are there. But an uncut pattern will get more money. And that's what that looks like. All still folded nicely. Just a tip if you decide to try to sell patterns. So nobody was shopping sweaters, obviously. The store had long sleeve, short sleeve, and sleeveless was how they categorized the women's clothes. And even in the summer, I prefer to sell long sleeve. I think you can get more for them. Long sleeve um, shirts for hiking or linen or a tunic blouse. You know, you can, you can still get lightweight fabrics that are long sleeve. Tank tops and sleeveless, um, they're really hard to get any money for. So I found a, some fun things in the sweaters. I'll just have to remember to relist them in the fall because they probably won't sell for the price I'm going to ask. So this one is a vintage sweater, but it's Suzanne D or Susan D. And that's actually a name when you, when you search for sold, you'll find it. And the ones that um, get the most money have like farm animals or cars or this is called intarsia where the pattern is part of the knitting rather than applied to the outside but i just thought it was beautiful what do you think would you have picked up that sweater made in hong kong 100 percent shetland wool i just think the pattern is so cool somebody's gonna want it and um right now a vintage susan d sweater is going for about 25 dollars but no, I'm going to get more than that. Same with this one. This is a J. Jill medium petite cardigan in a fair aisle. Fair aisle because it's got the circular neck. 
um, printing. This is kind of an unusual Fair Isle, but um, in that it doesn't have snowflakes, it's got like, I don't know, leaves, trees. Those would be trees if they were upside down. But I'm going to call it Fair Isle anyway, and Nordic. Fair Isle is in Scotland, Nordic is the Scandinavian islands, but or Scandinavian countries, but I'll do both. And it's a Shetland wool sweater. Right now, these are selling for, again, $25, but no, I want like $40. Here's a, I keep saying no more vintage that's just oddball. This is vintage candle knitting mills um, from Portland, Oregon. Known for outfitting varsity lettermen and cheerleaders back in the day. So this is a cheerleader sweater. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any patches. If you find um, a varsity sweater or a cheerleading sweater with the school letters on it or school patches on it, you can get a lot of money. This um, this might be my experiment to go on Depop. So, candle. I shouldn't have bought it, but I'll just call it a varsity or cheerleader sweater and see what happens. I don't know why I do that. Torture myself, I guess. This was a new brand to me, but because it felt like linen and it said made in Italy, Viola Borghi, Borghi, I don't know how to pronounce Italian words, but it's linen, it's got a roll tab sleeve, where's the button, there we go, and the back yoke is this pretty lace, and it's kind of a Henley button, half button shirt, I just thought it was very pretty. And it's a medium, and it's linen. Um, probably 30-ish, probably less. But that is not a, a name I'd ever heard before, but there are, there are a lot of solds. Savannah Jane is something I keep finding um, more recently, and I've sold three or four pieces. They usually have embroidery on them, and this is just a fun peplum top with um, little, very little bell sleeve. Savannah Jane, do you sell that at all? I think that was cute. Everything's cute, Heidi, come up with some better words. Here is a Western shirt for a woman from Roper. Wear the West, it says. When I saw this uh, contrasting print in the collar, I immediately looked at the cuff, and sure enough, it does have a flip cuff, so that's kind of fun. This is a shadow plaid again. Remember when I talked about that? Um, in a kind of a really cool blue and gray, and it's a pearl snap with white snaps and cute little pocket flaps, and the back has the pointed yoke. Um, people are only getting like 15 or 20 for these. I can get more. Their pictures were crap and their descriptions weren't very good. This was fun. My first time finding this brand. I know everybody else finds it every week. Alice and Olivia. This is called the Piper, I think. It's a black uh, gingham check shirt with um, roll tab sleeve. But I think, let's look that up. Dun, 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 dun. This goes, yeah, these little, only in America. So this shirt was probably about $200 new. And these roll tabs, that's lamb leather. Lamb leather for your little sleeve roll up things. So anyway, I'm going to... I don't know. There's a bunch of these for sale, but none sold, which tells me nobody wants this shirt. But, you know, what will I get for it? 30 to 45-ish, maybe? But I found my first Alice and Olivia, so I'm very happy. Here's a brand I find maybe once a year. It's the Spanish brand that nobody understands any of their designs. Desigual. This one has a big question mark on the front. And it says Y on the back. And it has kind of a drawstring down there with a tie. So I guess you could make a little tiny peplum. 
but there are collectors of this brand, so I'm hoping I'll get 30. Here is an ordinary looking men's shirt. But <clears throat> because it says Mizzen and Main, I can't, I'm turning everything crooked today. Mizzen and Main, made in America, the Leeward collection. It's just an ordinary looking men's shirt. But I'll get $40 for it. Isn't that fun? This is one of L.L. Bean's iconic pieces. Usually I find it in a Henley, but this one is just a crew neck. It's, um, I'm gonna see if I, they used to call it the River Driver shirt, and now they call it the Two Layer shirt. But if you see, if you feel a, an L.L. Bean shirt that feels kind of like wool, but kind of not, the outer layer has a wool blend and the inner layer is cotton. So it's a wool shirt to be a very warm base layer. Just make sure that it isn't shrunk or felted. Um, if you take a man's neck and can smell it, well, well my, my reach, my wingspan is a little less than a yard. So if you can do this with a man's shirt, then it's not shrunk because the sleeve is, is um, about 35, 34, 35 inches from the neck. But usually I find a Henley like this, but they always sell quickly for 25 or 30 dollars. The last one I found, my husband took it. I love him. Speaking of husbands, this is for him. He, in the winter, he likes to wear turtlenecks, channeling Steve Jobs, I guess. And the last ones I got him from, um, from Land's End, which used to be nice turtlenecks, they were just kind of thin and skimpy feeling. This is an L.L. Bean. It's a navy blue. He usually gets black ones, but it's beautiful and soft and not stretched or shrunk or anything. So he will like that. I, I keep saying i got to slow down on the J. Jill, and then I go back and look, and it's selling, so I don't need to. You don't need to see the thing. This is a tunic sweater. First I thought it was a dress, but it's got slits here, so no. And it's just ba very basic and gray and blog and looky and what's it made of? I think viscose, viscose and wool. And viscose is another name for rayon. But it's a more expensive um, fabric than polyester, obviously. So um, I'll probably ask like 40 and I'll probably take 30. Here was a new brand to me. Maybe it will be to you. And this is um, Malai, M-A-L-A-I, and then underneath it says swimwear. And I searched and searched. Oh, look at that. It's got a cute little charm on the back. This is, at first I thought it was like a tunic shirt. It's covered with palm leaves and some sort of flower. But when I noticed it said swimwear, then I assumed that this is a cover-up. And when I did a little more digging, I found it sold at various swim boutiques. And then I discovered it sold at Anthropology. Right now, they've got 30-some pieces from this brand on their website. So I can safely list it as Anthropology. Knew this was probably 120. So I'll ask maybe 40. But have you ever heard of Malai Swimwear? Oh, here's another sweatery thing. And probably another J. Jill thing. Sure enough, this one's pure Jill. And it is a hip length, or longer than hip length, cardigan. Again, just a great layering piece for those people that love to layer. This is cotton. 96% cotton, 4% other fiber. It could be Doritos for all we know. What is other fiber? Are you just allowed to say and the rest is something else. We don't know what. So it buttons all the way down, but I have a feeling most people would wear it open. And um, again, I'll probably ask 40 or more for that. And then in the fall, I will relist it. Here's another one I'm going to relist in the fall. Soft surroundings. I still get and sell soft surroundings, but nothing plain. Last one I sold was called the Snap To It. 
and it had great big giant snaps going down the edges and that sold for 35. So this is a very elaborately embroidered cardigan with one of those um, Nordic uh, closures on the front. I forget what they're called. Frogs? Yeah, something like that. But that's classic for a Norwegian sweater to have those. And then the back looks like that. And this has a name, but I don't remember what it was. A name. I just looked it up. Hmm. Oh, it's called the Okada. You didn't need to know that, did you? Anyway, there's several for sale right now, none sold. But when I go back and look in Terra Peak older data, they have sold in the range of 35 or 40. And again, I don't think they're asking enough. But that's what we'll try. The last few items are more men's, but there's some really big winners here. So I usually in men's like to look at sport coats and blazers. Remember, a blazer is preferably navy blue, but it might be black and it's got brass buttons. That's a blazer. Sometimes they're double-breasted, but that's kind of, I don't know. I would really have to love it to get a double-breasted blazer. So blazers are navy or black with brass buttons. Sport coats are um, jackets that you wear with trousers that don't match, right? They're not suiting like a pinstripe charcoal gray or a, um, a definite soft wool. You know what I mean. Suit jackets we don't get. I don't get. You go ahead. They're hard to sell on, on their own. But sport coats can be tweed, herringbone, and a, or a lovely flannel. And I found two. These are going to get, they're each going to get probably $50 to $60. So this is flannel. See how soft and brushed it is? It's, it's not unlike your flannel shirt, but it's not like your flannel shirt. And it's a two-button classic sport coat in a really nice flannel. And it's got a beautiful paisley lining. And it is Lauren Ralph Lauren. Don't sneer. The last Lauren Ralph Lauren sport coat I sold, sold for $60. This is 50% silk, 40% wool, and 10% cashmere. And it's a 46 regular. What do you think of that? Again, I hope to get 50 or $60. This one is a nice medium chocolatey brown color. And I found another one just like it in black. When I say just like it, you probably don't need to see this one too. Isn't that great? For f These were $6 each. $6 into... And, and again, this won't be, sometimes sport coats are long sell, another 46 regular, but these, these won't be. People like Lauren Ralph Lauren sport coats, and this is a beautiful fabric. I know it's the wrong time of year, and people will send me $30 offers, and I will ignore them until I get, I really would like 50, but I'm going to ask more. What do you think of that? Do you ever take a peek at the, at the uh, men's sport coats? Here is an L.L. Bean 100% organic cotton 2XL seersucker shirt. It's so cute. Probably, probably only get about 20 to 25, but I love a good summer shirt. Here might be my prize of the day. I was flipping through the men's shirts, and I found the Mizzen and Main, and I found the L.L. Bean, and so on and so on. And this denim shirt caught my eye because, you know, sometimes Levi or Wrangler denim shirts, <clears throat> if you get them cheap, you can get them, you can get like 20 or 25 for them. I really hope to find a pearl snap because denim pearl snap, and again, this is denim, this is not chambray. This is, chambray is thinner, well, and it's made out of chambray fabric and not denim. So this is a denim shirt. And then I, when I saw this tag, I thought, well, that's unusual. And I couldn't read really read what it said. It said, or slow. And then it said, since 2005, denim products made in Japan. And I went, okay, 
Normally, when we see made in Japan on home goods, they're vintage. When I was a kid and a young person, everything was made in Japan the same way now everything's made in China. But made in Japan and denim made me go, ooh, because there are some really important denim manufacturers in Japan. Um, and uh, denim is hugely uh, culturally popular in Japan, almost more than here. And a lot of what they like is American denim, but they're developing their own. They've got some amazing salvage denim manufacturers. So anyway, Orslo, O-R-S-L-O-W, denim. So I looked it up, and this is a winner. Let me tell you what I found. I found this shirt, the same shirt for sale, on a website called Mr. Porter. That's the exact same shirt, same pocket and everything. Sorry, it's reflecting. Uh, the retail is two hundred and eighty dollars. So then, when I looked in eBay for selling or slow or slow denim shirts, um, most of them are coming from Japan. They're offered for sale from Japan, or they're sold, or all of the solds. Army fatigue. Here's an army fatigue jacket for sale for two ninety nine. Another one two ninety nine. So my denim shirt. What size is this one? That's my problem. It doesn't have a size on it. Oh, there it is. Size three, which is a uh, men's large. So sold. Sorry, I'm so excited about this. I have to share it with you. Sold $78, um, $75, $59, $63, so $70. I'm actually going to offer, uh, ask more. I'm going to ask like $90 and see what I get because there's nothing for sale like this right now. And that's half of, that's a third of retail. So why wouldn't I be able to get it? Have you ever heard of or slow denim. If you see it, please look it up because you might have something worth at least thirty or forty dollars, and maybe two or three hundred dollars. So that's my that's my haul today. I would love to hear what your favorite thing was, or if you're very excited about my Alice and Olivia find. Which one do you think I'll make the most money on? I had a great time. I appreciate you coming. I gotta go. I gotta go shave a few lint balls off of that. There it is, that afghan there. It's really cool rainbow stripe. And I got it for $3.50 at the bins. It's very clean and in great shape, but it's got lint balls. Anyway, I was getting ready to say goodbye, so let's do that now. I have a lot of work to do today. You too, get after it. See you next time. Bye, kids.